Hello. Happy Friday. Let's see if this is working because first stream. Yay. So I guess Peter, let me know if there's any sound issues. Chris, yay. Thanks for being here. I know you had plans to do stuff with your family tonight. So even if you don't stick around. Five by five. Either that means five out of five or five stars, or I'm going to assume it's a good thing. <laughs> uh, that is good. How are you doing today, Chris? We haven't really talked much since this morning. Hey, Chelsea. All square. Buffy the Vampire. <laughs> Tired wall. If you went to bed a little bit earlier, you wouldn't be as tired, Chris. I tried last night to tell you, but you never listen one of these days. And how are you doing, Chelsea? Are you feeling any better after Wednesday's shot? That's right, Chris. Go to bed. Even though it's 6 o'clock, it's dinner time, and you're spending time with family, we're still going to tell you to go to bed, because any time's a good time for you to get some sleep. So yeah, Chelsea, I, I miss doing game night Wednesday with you, but hopefully you're feeling better. Glad that you finished up your shots. Oh, Chick-fil-A for dinner. It's been a little while since I went and grabbed Chick-fil-A, but What's your go-to order? I I typically get a spicy chicken sandwich. Oh, that's great to hear, Chelsea. Sp yeah, spicy chicken. Yeah, get it no pickle, add Colby Jack cheese, and use the barbecue sauce on it. course it's the waffle fries it's it's hard to beat their fries i think the only thing i like more is curly fries seasoned curly fries the lemonade is good it is a lot of sugar there i used to work chick-fil-a and so i knew how they made it it was literally water lemon juice and sugar like they took whole lemons and pulped them in store yeah, no pickle, that's right. Well, I, I like pickles, but on, on the sandwiches there, it's a little bit better without the pickle. Especially since they only do two pickle. It's like, that's maybe half the bites at most that you get pickle in the bite. Yeah, my preferred pickles, I get jars of basically spicy pickle chips. That There's like mango and habanero when it's pickled, so a little bit spicy and tangy on top of the regular pickle taste. A little bit more enjoyable. Uh, yeah, so y'all know we're gonna play Sagrada tonight. Woo uh, Chelsea, have you played Sagrada before? I don't know if I've seen it on your shelf. I know P uh, Peter loves Sagrada. Wait, you just threw up a little bit. I hope it's because of the pickle talk and not because of how you're feeling, Chelsea. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be playing Sagrada. Um, I have it set up, so we're going to play the slightly modified solo rule. Uh, shown because if you want to play along, you can. Chelsea a jar of pickles. Pickle talk, okay. We'll try to avoid the pickle talk from now on. I'll make sure not to bring any to your house, Chelsea. Only if you, like, beat me really bad at a game and, and I get upset with you, Chelsea, then I'll put a jar of pickles on your doorstep. <laughs> see, Chair, see, Chris, I can take the pickles out away from the games if there's an issue. <laughs> Only if she deserves the pickles. Maybe. Ah, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and move the box out of the way. So I went ahead and preset up. Oh, crying emoji face. Oh, I'll try to be nice and not do it to you, Chelsea. It, it, it takes a lot to upset me, and I don't think you ever you ever could. Just like Chris and Peter, all of y'all are so great. Thank you, Chris. Yes, I've been working on the setup. I have a little top down next to me to my right. And then a little bit I'll switch and also show a little dice tray for rolling the dice. Um, so y'all can play along. Use the same stained glass window if y'all like or a different one if you choose to play with me. It is the Luge Celestial. This is actually one of the easier stained glass windows just for so I can focus on the stream a little bit more tonight, not just playing. Um, but if someone hasn't played before, there are multiple to choose from. The dots in the bottom right show how hard or easy it is to play. The more dots, the harder it gets. It goes up to six dots in the stained glass window. So I'm going to slide this into the actual cardboard stained glass window. Here it stay. So now every dice will have a spot and it won't slide around when you put dice in it. Uh, Peter, are you going to try to play along? Or possibly even Chelsea. I know Chris is probably just chatting tonight. Um, if you'd like to play along, let me know, and I, I won't go too fast tonight. Oh, the fancy picture and picture. Just you wait. It'll be a picture and picture and picture. <laughs> Certainly can. Um, yeah. So if you don't have the game. All you have to do is get a piece of pen and paper and draw a grid. And, and I really appreciate it, Chris. Loving it. Uh, so yeah, if you just draw a grid that is four rows by five columns and write out one through ten with spaces to write under them where you can write the dice. And that's all you need to do to be able to follow along and play yourself. Or, of course, you can pull out your own game, pull up, pull out one of the stained glass boards, play along, pull out the cards so you can see them on your own table. But I'll describe each card as well. So Sagrada is about building a stained glass window, trying to score the most points against your fellow artists. Just chatting. Okay, Chelsea. Headed to dinner soon? Oh, thank you, Chelsea. Where are you going to dinner tonight? Going to go get barbecue again, or... Something faster. Oh, and I still have the games to bring to you for that trade. Sorry, I got distracted by my phone. Friend at work, so they finally got their driver's permit after they moved here, so they can finally drive to work again. Chris is going to lurk, hiding in the background like a quiet ninja. Well, that, that's a first. Chris is typically never quiet, not quite like a ninja, but we love him anyway. <laughs> Phoenix Upper Main. I'll have to look that up. Let me know how good it is, because I've not been there. Well, a stalker is someone you don't want there, for sure. We want Chris to be around, so I, I think lurking is better. <laughs> Okay, uh, Peter, if you're going to play along, uh, I'm going to go over the cards for you real quick. Um, so we're going to play with two private objective cards and two public cards. The, let's see, the public ones, I believe, are the blue back. I, uh, of course, I draw a blank right when I start talking about it. Does it actually say in... Surprised the rule booklet doesn't actually show the back of the card saying which is which, but I'm sure you can tell on it. We're going to be playing with the row shade variety, so it's five points for rows with no repeated values. Oh, nice. Well, if there's any places that your sister suggests we go eat or do anything around, let me know. Because, I, of course, I'm still new to the era and with the pandemic. 
having to stay inside a lot more. I did not get to go visit much once I moved here. Uh, okay, so we said the, the five points for row shade variety, where each row you want every dice to have a different value. We're also going to be playing with the column color variety. Five points for each row where each color is different. Each die in that row is different. And then for the what are considered the private objectives, we're going to be doing the shades of purple, which is going to be points for the sum of values on our all purple dice in your window. And then this last card is the wall. This is actually from the five to six player expansion, but it's so much fun to use in the solo game, I could not include it for my first string. This is based on sum of values in the dice in the shaded area. So basically the six middle spots of your window will score points. And then for the tools, we're going to be using four different tools. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the wall or the different varieties of what it shows as the walls from the five to six player expansion. I'll show you some of the other ones real quick. They, they have uh, the brace, the fence, the brackets, which is kind of the upper corners, the port, which kind of makes it an O shape, and then the tunnel, which is the top and bottom edges. So these are really fun to play with, especially in the solo, because it, it really adds the variety, so it's not just the colors that you're, you're adding up. So it, it really pushes you to try different strategies. So the four tools I pulled out, um, we have tool number two, which is Eglomize Brush. So move any one die in your window, ignoring color restrictions. But you have to uh, follow all other placement. Yeah, so the five to six player expansion. Uh, what's in it? Uh, so it adds more additional dice to be able to use. It gives you a little cardboard dice tray to assemble. It gives you, uh, let's see, the private and public cards. It gives you even more window cards. It gives you a few more tools. And then it also gives you, I don't have them within reach. Basically it adds like little private dice pools, like little cardboard cards that you can set extra dice on. And kind of at the certain points in the game, you can take those and set them aside for later. Oh yeah, it, it's great. Even if you don't actually play with five to six players, the additional pieces in it that you can use for solo play is so nice. Like I picked it up and I've, I don't think I've gone back to not using something from that expansion. Now I still need to pick up the other expansions, which I'm blanking on the names of. They're like light or something else like that. I could probably pull it up. But um, so yeah, back to the tools before I forget where I was. But thanks Peter for asking. Oh, it's the five to six player expansion for Sagrada. Uh, does it have a name? Now that we're talking about it, I, I can't not look it up. Okay. I'm on BGG because it's the easiest way to look stuff up like this. Uh, so it's not the Caves Passion. No, that's just the regular expansion. It's just Sagrada five to six player expansion. It was released in 2018. Um, yeah. Oh, right now it's actually on sale at Amazon too, if you want to go get it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth it. Like, if it's a game you're gonna play a lot, the expansion alone, even for solo play, is well worth it. Uh, where was I? Yes, tools. So we talked about tool number two. Tool number three is the copper foil burnisher. Uh, this one allows you to move any one die in your window, ignoring the value restrictions. But then you have to follow all of the restrictions. So we have one card that you can ignore color, one day ignore uh, the value when you move it. The third tool is number four. Hush, Chuck can hear you. Are you, are you saying that I need to whisper when I talk about sales so he doesn't know you're going to try to go buy it or that he's going to try to surprise you with it? Either way. <laughs> um, 
So tool, the third tool is number four, Lathithkin. Uh This allows you to move exactly two dice, obeying all other restrictions. And then the fourth tool is the number 10 tool, Grinding Stone. Uh, so after you pick a, pick a dice, <laughs> yes, probably yes and yes, either way, he'll... Yeah, I, I know y'all, anytime we talk about games and if there's a sell or a way to get it, that if y'all want to pick it up, just kind of like me, that, that's that's why we're perfect friends. Um, yeah, so the grinding stone, after you draft a die, you can flip it to its opposite side. So say you rolled a one, the opposite side is a six, so you can change the number, really help you out. Uh, in the solo game, to use any of these tools, you actually have to take a die from the round tracker. So basically a die from the previous round. You can take one of those of the matching color of that tool, and then you can use that tool. But then that die and that tool are out of the game, so you can only use it once. Now, since we're doing it solo and you can play on your own, I might use that tool in one way, and you might decide to not use the tool or use it at a different point in the game. So you can, if you have the cards yourself, use them or write it down on paper when you use it or how you use it. Um... You know what, let me switch so y'all can see the, okay, so now you can see it a little bit better. Yes, I'm still here, up in the corner, but yes, picture and picture and picture, because I got the dice tray. Yeah, so this is a fun little dice tray that you can assemble. It's just cardboard, uh, but yeah, you can roll the dice and that comes in the five to six player expansion. Um, so if you've played the solo rules, you, the scoring at the end is going to be slightly different for how we score today versus regular solo rules. <laughs> Up here going, what? I don't know if you're talking about the picture and picture and picture or if you're talking about the dice tray, but either way, I'm happy with what I have and how I was able to set it up. I've, I've been kind of behind the scenes working and getting ready for this, and I actually just assembled the dice tray today. I was like, I have to use it. It's too nice. Bye, Chelsea. Thanks for stopping by and talking. Um, I really appreciate you coming by for my first stream. I'll, I'm sure I'll probably see you next week, game night, or on stream soon. So have a, have a great evening and great weekend. So Peter talking about both. Thank you very much, Peter. Okay, so Peter, I know you're still there. Um, we're going to talk about the scoring at the end. So we're ready to, to play it with that score. So typically, when you go solo, you score so many negative points for any unfilled space. We're not doing negative three points for space. We're going to do negative one point like the regular rules. Thanks, Chelsea. So instead of, it's just going to be one negative points for any empty space instead of three. Because then we can compare scores. We're not going to compare it to the board. We're going to compare it to each other's scores since someone else is playing. That's the fun part of playing remotely like this. Um, so you're going to actually gain one point for every tool you don't use. So it's going to kind of be like, instead of having the little gem things, I'm not giving you gems, but for every tool you don't use, you're going to get a point. And then solo rules is typically you score... Let me verify if it was the private or the public. So the private ones, you would typically only score one of those in solo. We're going to have fun with it because we like points. We're going to score both public and both private options. So we're going to go point salad on this game. But it's not easy to do either. Because do you want purple or do you want to fill in for that middle? You're going to have to make that decision to which one gets you more points for each place die you place. So with that, we can begin to play. So... Peter, um, I'm going to take the four die, we'll roll them, and then you can match those die, and then you can place them however you want. You can let me know if you're actually playing the same window or not. Um, either way, it's fun. Or if you want to roll your own, own dice and do that as well, however you want to play, of course. But I'm going to be playing this window, these dice, and okay, playing the same window. Okay, so if you want to play the same dice, I'm going to roll them right now in the dice tray. 
So let me know if you can see all those numbers well. I will also read them off. So we have a one blue, we have a four blue, a five purple, and a six purple. Okay, so we're gonna all play the exact same way. That'll be a great comparison to see how much better than you are at, at this game than I am, Peter. Because to be honest, it's been several months since I've played. I play so much online with Chris nowadays that I don't always get to play solo games as much as I want to, which is okay, because I'm still playing games. Okay, so I got one, four, five, and six. So the first die we place has to be around the outer edge of the window, which I'm sure you know, Peter. Okay, so where do I want to put this? Of course, we have that purple space we could play on too. Or, oh. Hmm, tricky, tricky. Well, considering we have the shades of purple, which I'm, I'm going to kind of talk through how I'm going to play this. Peter, you can follow, do the same or not. It's up to you. But you're going to know my strategy. I'm going to place the five purple in the upper, near the upper corner where it has that five spot. Because I know I want to score purples. So that gives me five purple for sure. So now we're also going to pick one more die to place this round. This die has to be adjacent to the die already placed. Now, like I said, it's been a little while. I need to verify that if it's just orthogonally or if it's any adjacent replacement. First die. Okay, so when you place a die, it can be orthogonal or diagonal, but you do not want orthogonally adjacent die to be the same color or same number. Five purple on the purple spot. Okay, that is a nice placement. I like that idea. I, I, I honestly considered that. I almost went there. Um, but it is what it is at this point, and I... Now, I know I want different numbers, and I want different colors in the rows and columns. I'm actually going to go with the four in the corner. So this sets me up to have different numbers in the, in the row and different colors, because I know I don't want blue going down. Of course, it has to be green next to it, so it wouldn't fit. Diagonal, I don't want the four next to the other four spot, so I'm avoiding it. Okay, so these two die that are not used actually go on the round track with round number one. So now in future rounds, we can use one tool per round, I believe. What's the restriction under that spot? Are you talking under the, the five spot? That is a, gr oh, this one right here. Okay, that is a bit shadowed. That is a three. Row two, column five. Yep, that is actually a three. So I didn't want to put a three. I don't want a three next to that. I don't want a four over here to block my four being placed later. Heard. Thank you, Peter. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna take the two die and use. And Peter, of course, you can use different die than I use. No need to no need to, but uh, okay. And like we talked about, let's verify in the which we can make it our own rules, of course, but the tool cards can you uh da -da. Yeah, so we can use, oh, so far, same dice. Uh, that's going to happen at the beginning of the game a lot more easily. Uh, so you can use as many tools in a round as you choose, as long as you have enough dice to spend on those tools. So you're not limited to one tool per round. That's how we're going to play. Okay, so next round, four more dice. One, two, three, four. Try not to look at them. And we're going to roll them. Okay, let's see what we got here. I like to put them in order. That's not fully OCD, but how many of those glass beads do we have for tools? Okay, so part of the solo play, we don't actually use the glass beads. Uh, in a solo game, what you actually do 
dice from previous rounds you actually can take and place on a tool but you have to match the upper corner so i could take this blue dice from the previous round and place it on that tool and so then when i use that tool with that die that dice would be out of the game that tool is now out of the game so typically um you would in a solo game you score against basically the scoring track so any die that would go to the score track you're trying to beat the score but it would get whatever goes there so it's kind of i want to select high put all the low die on the score track but in this case we're just going for high score versus whoever else is playing so it's we're kind of doing a modification of multiplayer and solo mixed together it, i found it works a little bit easier virtually like this it's actually what i did on instagram last year why i picked it for my first stream because it is one of the smoothest games to play virtually like this and it's of course beautiful so i'm not actually going to use that tool right now so i'm going to put this back in the first round now for this round we have a blue one green two yellow three yellow four now peter i know you're playing along with your own set but i'm just going to do a quick reminder if anyone has shown up or watches this later if you're doing this on paper on a grid all you have to do for the dice is write like if you wanted that uh, green die green two you could put a g2 in one of the locations to simulate that you had a green die of the number two so you can easily just write everything on a grid you don't have to have everything to play on your own if you're watching along and playing okay so now i need to actually select what i want oh i have to touch in some way what I've already placed. I may have made a bad decision painting myself into a corner with those previous selections, but I will make it work. Okay, so numbers across, I don't want that. Yeah. Start by opening up my options a little bit placing the green there that's going to open up how far i can spread across the board of course now do i want a yellow to spread across the board get a different number and color Ooh, that would be go blue down but that's a low number okay i think what i want to do here peter you probably know where i'm going with this i'm going to take this four I like high numbers on the middle to score it later. So I'm going to put it diagonally next to the green because anything you place can be diagonal or orthogonal. So now that's going to be, allow me to still place yellow later. Gets me a high enough number. It doesn't block my four spot and kind of opens up my options to spread across the board faster again. So the two die not used, we're going to put in the round two section. That gives us two blues. Well, gives me two blues, a yellow, and a purple for the tool card. Now, Peter, you may have done something different. So your your die may be different on the score tracker at this point. But then again, we may think the same, and you may have done some of the same stuff I did. Keeping track. Yep. Okay, so I'm drawing four more die. Going to roll them now. Oh, we got some high numbers. And what do we got here? That's a four. I like to put them in order, just visually. I like it that way. So we got a red three, blue four, blue six, red six. somewhere hmm. do I want to expand across the board and open up almost everything you know what 
this I like. I like this blue six down here. That's going to give me some good points for later in the game. And do I want to? No, I don't want the six there. Or no, I want to push the four. Or do I want my red? You know what? I know I need red. I got some reds out right now. I might as well get my reds going. And it's a different number. That's going to be nice. So I'm going to go right there in the top middle. So I'm pretty close to having access to my whole board. Blue four, red six are going to my ground tracker. I'm not going to use a tool yet. Okay, Peter, let me know if you're ready. I uh, don't want to go too fast or too slow. We're going to just have a relaxing evening of playing and chatting. So yeah, the rules going kind of a mix of solo and multiplayer with the scoring and how I've set it up. It does feel different, um, but playing it a few times, it starts to make sense a lot. Okay, so I'm rolling the next four dice. So I got ooh, a lot of fours. That's, oh, no, that was a one. Didn't mean to flip it. I was just trying to move it. Okay, so we got a blue one, red four, blue four, yellow four. Now we're having fun with colors. And all the same numbers, of course. So this is going to be where it gets tricky, tricky. Oh, I... I see I may have already messed up. I realized I put my six in that row. Not and we want rows of different numbers. I may end up having to move some stuff in a minute. There's no better time than now to use one of those fours and open up that four spot. So I will go for the red. And do I want to do that? No, I'm going to actually go for the yellow down here on the yellow spot. So the, the value to doing that, now I have three fours together. I know that's going to be six. So that means four different numbers can go in that spot near that lower corner. So it limits me less. I like it. The wall is going to kill me. Yeah, that wall is a unique card to try to play with. It's definitely something to get used to. It's like you're so used to, okay, thinking, of, okay, just this color or this row. But now we're like, okay, this exact section and we're going for high points in this section too. So we're balancing both at the same time. Um, do I want to move some dice already? You know what? Yes. I'm going to use a tool I'm going to use the Lothethkin tool, pulling a yellow from the round tracker, putting it on the tool, so I can move exactly two dice, obeying all placement restrictions. This will allow me to move the six off the blue spot onto the six spot. And then I'm going to move the four from up here Oh, no, I don't want it there. I have to follow all restrictions, don't I? No, I don't want to move that four. But what I could do, I want to move the five over to the purple. I, I think, Peter, you were right where you started that. That five on the purple was a better placement. 
So I just used up a tool that's going to be less one, one more point. I can't get at the end that you're going to have over me. Okay, so I'm going to put the one blue, one four under the round tracker. And get four more dice. I assume you're ready, Peter. You seem to be playing just as fast as me. Tell me if we're not. I will slow down if you want me to. I will attempt to ramble, even though you know I'm pretty quiet to begin with. I will. I'm live on stream. I'll ramble as much as I need to. Talk to whoever's here. We are tit for tat. Okay. So, four more dice rolled into the tray. Uh, we got a blue three, a purple one, red six, and yellow six. Well, first right up, I know I need to cover that blue spot. It's a three there. Do I want a three there? don't have a red in that first row, but I do have a... S Ooh. Can't do that. Yeah, no, I'm thinking too hard. Um... I'm gonna have a little fun with this one, even though. Oh, but that's the same color. Same color. Blue three there. No, I won't do that. I, I I tend to think a little too hard in some of these games, Peter. Sorry. Uh, that's a three. I don't think it's a three. Not blue still. But that, so that blue three is probably not going to go anywhere. Is that red six going to get anywhere for me? Yeah, I think that red six in the upper corner is a really nice location. And then that, oh. Getting this yellow six somewhere. Nothing says I can't move it later. Yeah, I'm just going to put it in the bottom here. No. Well, I let go of it. If I'm playing by chess rules, you let go of the piece. It's set, so I'll do it that way, so I don't take too long for you watching, uh, Peter. And let's go to the next round. So purple one, blue three on the round tracker. We are now halfway through the game. Only want my best game, so the win is that much better. Well, I said it was an easy setup, but I, I realized I'm glad I did that because I had to think through, okay, I need to talk a lot more, talk through what I'm doing. I'm like, why am I doing that? Oh, we got some high numbers now. Whew. Okay, so we got a green five, two purple fives, and a red six. Hmm. Well, I, straight up, that, that green five needs to go in the middle right here for me. I need scoring for the wall. It fits. It sits. It's like a cat. So some purple fives. Oh, but I do like some purple. Well, I may have wasted using that tool earlier, moving that purple five, because I may just place this purple five onto the five spot now. Should I? Uh, yeah, I don't see why I wouldn't. Or shouldn't so I will I probably wasted that tool give you give you a, a leg up and I'm gonna put a purple five and a red six onto the round tracker
Now the nice thing is I've set myself up some little corners of surrounded by red, surrounded by yellow, so it doesn't limit my colors as much. And kind of match some of the same numbers surrounding those also helps so you don't limit your numbers either. Oh, but now I'm looking for a lot of low numbers. I need some ones and twos. I need a three. Probably get away with another five. Probably another six would be nice too. Oh no, Peter in trouble. What'd you do? You, did you paint yourself into a corner? Maybe use one of the tools, because remember, some of the one tool allows you to, to move something ignoring color restrictions, or the other tool allows you to move something ignoring the number restrictions. I know you don't want to use the tool, because that's a, that's a point. Nothing crazy yet, but it looks mine, mine looks better. Well, I feel it looks good, but I have to be careful, because I'm going to paint myself into a corner, too. And, that, and that's kind of the, the fun play on words here because we're doing stain we're artists doing stained glass windows we're not painting the windows we're making some nice glass but it's still fun so i'm gonna go to the next round assuming you're ready peter going to the late game okay roll in roll in roll in and we got a purple one a purple three a blue five and a red six well i did talk about needing some Oh, three. Yep, I need that three. It's really good, and it's purple. I, I can't ignore that. That three spot that need that needs a three. Take it purple. Score some points at the end. So now I got a five blue. Ooh, but I want a different number in that row. So I got two, three, four, five. So I need a six or a one there. Mm, different color at the bottom. Ooh, yeah, something's some row or some column's not going to score like I want it to, so I'm going to may have to bite the bullet on this one or do something I don't want to do. Get points in one way where I can't get points another. Okay, so I can't do that. But yeah, I'm going to hope hope for the best here and push my luck. Yeah, I think this is, yeah, I get away with one column not working. Yeah, so I'm going to take the six, the red six, I'm going to place it first. But then I want to be able to move it ignoring color restrictions. So I need to take a blue from the round tracker, put it on the tool, tool number two, the Eglomize brush. That's going to allow me to move this six. Placing it right here into the middle for the wall. Ignoring the color above and next to it being the same. Going to miss two row and a column so far. Yeah, it, that, that wall gets tricky. You're like, okay, I can score a lot of points in this wall, but then does it start messing up your rows and columns? You have to, you have to kind of figure out which one is more valuable sometimes. But I, I've realized you can't really score every row in every column in every game. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, I, I'm going to miss out on the column where I just move that 6-2 because now I have two of the same color. But it's also worth 6 points to the wall instead of 5 points on my column. So it's finding that balance. It was worth a point more in the long run. So about 5s are bigger in the middle. I, I used to think fives are bigger in the middle was nice, but then I realized it's such a tight space, you have to expand to fours. Sometimes, and of course I have a two there, so I can't, can't do much beyond that, but that was a green, and we haven't had many more greens show up, and I got the other, other green into it at least in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to move the purple one and blue five to the round tracker. Now we have three rounds left. I have two tools left. And I'm going to get four more dice. Shake them, shake them, roll them, roll them. And we got a green three, purple three, purple four, red five. 
Well, there's some of those purples that can help you score points, Peter, if you can still fit them in. Because we definitely need, because we're scoring based on purples this game, too. Oh, where can I fit those, though? Can't go that low. I have so many purples, and we haven't rolled a two. I may have to. Oh, but I don't have any greens in my round tracker to use that tool either. That's where I, I may have messed myself up. Greens aren't scoring, but they're good for that tool. Oh, but do I, would I want to move anything for value? Is Give me more value. Would that help you at all? This has to be a six. Corner has to be anything. That can be anything. Oh. Yeah, I think. Okay, so well, first off, I'm going to take the red five. Bottom corner, guaranteed to fit. No issue there. Oh, but do I want to block myself in that way? I want to put all low numbers into the corner. No, I don't. I do want to put it this other corner. So, I want to use a purple. I can't use it here. Obviously, can't go there. Three and four can't go there. So, if I want to use purple, it has to be the purple three in that corner. But I lose that column. It's purple that scores me points, but do I want to do it that way? Yeah, I, th I think I have to play it this way. Um, so yeah, green three, purple four to the round tracker, leaving us two rounds left and in really precarious positions. Peter, I think you're starting to see that mine is not looking as great as it first seems, so maybe you have a, a better chance, and thank you, you're ready. So we got a yellow three, green three, uh, blue one, red two. Oh, finally some low numbers, thank you. Three, four, five, six. okay, I have to take the two. I have to use it. It has to go there. I needed the two. That gets my row. Oh, that one blue fits so well up there, but I also need that blue. Nope, I'm gonna use another tool. I'm gonna take one of the reds from my round tracker, put it on tool number three, copper foil burnisher, move my blue four to the four blue to the blue spot in the middle of the board. That's a wall spot, scoring me more points for that one. And then that opens up other spots because that tool allows me to ignore value. So I'm ignoring the four value next to this blue. Well, barely. Yep. It's almost like that spot's cut a little bit small for that die on my board, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. So that opens up a little bit more value spots in my upper row. Let's see. So I can go one, two, four up there now. And we do have a one I can use. I think to guarantee at least a column point, I'm gonna put the one here. So then I have all different colors in that column as I place it. And I still have a chance to go across on that row. But the column I moved it to four next to four are not gonna score me. But for the wall, I did score, so. Hedge your bets. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And I'm going to put the three yellow and green three. I had no threes. 
Are you saying it needs to be all threes would would hurt you, or do you need anything but a three? Anything but. Well, chances are it, it would be the chances are so high that it would be all threes that if it did, I couldn't have a, a nice purple six. You know what? If we get a purple six, that's all all for you because I wouldn't be able to use it. So I, I hope it's not purple at all. I haven't even looked at the color yet. They're in my hand right now because if it's purple, I can't place it. So let's roll them. Oh, there's no purple. Oh, sorry about that. So we got a red one, two green, red four, green four. Oh, tricky, tricky. Okay, so I can't place a four there, but I can put it in the upper corner. And I have to put the opposite color down low. Now the opposite color would not score for me because it's not on the wall and it's not purple. So it probably doesn't matter which one I place. Either way, that column will not score. So ultimately, it's not a huge deal what I take as long as I put a four in the upper corner. Or I could put the, yeah, because it fours can't go low. If I put the other in the upper corner, or the other numbers in the upper corner. So I can't put red low. So that means I need to put green low. Green two is going to go low. Because I can't put, I could put the green four up there, but at this point, if I, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter because my column won't matter. There's not a green up there. Red, red or green is going to mess up, but four either way has to be four. Since I have so much red on my board, I want to see a little bit more green. Green with envy because I didn't get what I wanted earlier. Put a red one, red four onto my score tracker. Did not use one tool. So that is the 10 rounds. No more dice, no more rolling. Use up those tools if you want to, if it's gonna help you out. Otherwise, we're gonna go to scoring. So Peter, if you're ready to go to scoring, let me know and we will shift forward. Otherwise, I will wait for you. Sometimes these last turns are a little bit tricky. Working on scoring. Uh, we can work on it together. I'll, I'll walk through how we do it. And if you want, I will help score yours on my scoreboard. And we can show our scores together. So, all the dice from the rounds are going to go off the board. Don't need them anymore. If it was a regular solo game, we would add them up. But we're not playing regular solo. We're playing a crossover solo and multiplayer together. So I'm going to flip the scoreboard over so we can score it well. I believe you can see it well. I'm going to you know what, let me see if it'll fit under this other camera. Oh, that's a really bad glare, so I won't do that right now. So I'm just going to do it down here. And I will choose... Oh, there it is. Look, I'm going to choose purple, but then purple is covered. Choose the purple one, and we're going to go to scoring. So first we're going to score for every tool you did not use. Yep, it was fine at the bottom. Okay, thank you, Peter. So for every tool we did not use, we get a point. I did not use one tool. Peter, what color would you like? Would you like red, orange, yellow, green, or blue? I'm going to track your score with mine. And then also tell me how many tools you did not use. You like green. Of course, you get green. And did you... So you didn't use any tools the whole game. Oh, that is great. So I need to get better at not using tools, but I, I get all over the place. I, I like moving things around, trying to figure out that puzzle, and sometimes I mess myself up with it. Okay, so now we're going to go to the row shade variety, which means every die in that row needs to be a different number. So... My top row, six, one, three, five, four. That is one row. All the numbers are different. Next row, two, three, four, five, six. That's two rows. Six, five, four, four, two. That row will not count for me. And then two, three, four, five, six. So I get three rows times five. 15 points gets me to 16. 
Peter, how many rows did you score? Let's see if you're able to get it. Three also, because you were talking earlier. Oh, you're going to miss two rows. Only one row. Ouch. That. We'll see if that's the deciding factor. But that's at least five points. That brings you to nine. Now I'm going to score the column color variety. So for each column where each dot in that column is a different color, we're going to get five more points. Column number one. There's two purples. That won't score for me. Column number two. They're all different. So that's one. Column number three, three reds, of course not. Column number four, all four colors are different, so that's two, two columns. Last one, we got two green, so that one's of course. So I only got two columns, so that's only 10 more points. So this is where, Peter, you might catch back up. I'm up to 26 now. And Peter, we're only two again. Ouch. I, you still have a chance, depending on what you did for purple and what you did for the wall. It's not over yet. Uh, but yeah, you definitely didn't use the tools. That that's kind of the the trick in this game, knowing when when a tool is more beneficial or not. Okay, so I'm going to score my purples. Okay, so I got a five, a three, total of eight, plus five more, total of thirteen, plus three more is sixteen points of purple. Now that takes me from twenty six to thirty six forty two. Now Peter, how much did you do on purple? No, I should have tried to be cool. 18 for purple. Well done. Okay, so 18, that's going to put it at 29, 37. You're catching back up. Okay, so now I'm going to add up the wall. So that is the middle six spaces of the board. Nothing touching a wall, just the middle. So I got a 4 and a 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus another 4, 20, plus 5 is 25. So 42 plus 25 is 67. I'm going to flip the token over to show 50. And we said it was 67, so that's going to be 17 plus 50. Oh, toast. Well, as long as it's not burnt and you had fun, I'll butter you up. But I had a great game. Uh, 23 for the wall, I'm assuming is what that number was. So let's at least get your totals for you. Because it looks like, so 37 plus 23, that's going to be 40, 60. So you still, you got, you got really close to catching back up. That was only a seven point difference. Loved it. No flip. Did I flip? Yeah, so you flip to the 50 because you, you flip to the 50 side of the small token. Because you actually, with your, what you had before, 37 plus 23, you actually bypassed, went all the way up to 60. So, there's only si seven point difference. Like, you, you're talking about being toast. When we talk about toast, sometimes it's, hey, Chris, I know you're listening. When I beat you at Small World, that was, Chris was toast in that game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was definitely a lot of fun. Oh, and look, a perfect hour-long stream for my first one. I, I don't think I could have done that any better if I tried. Um, so, Peter, thank you for joining and playing along. Hopefully, we can I can do this again soon. If you have any games you want me to try to play um, with you or show off, teach you, of course, you can see I have a wall of games behind me. Some have solo, some don't. But I'd love to figure out how to play with you because I like to play games and, of course, spread joy. So the more I can make you happy, if I can teach you, if I can make you smile, make you laugh, make you enjoy the time with me, that is what it's all about. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining, Peter. And as always, play games and spread joy. I will see you all next time. Do I have a fancy sign-off? That is probably the closest I have to a sign-off right there. That is... Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. As always, play games and spread joy. <laughs> so thank you. Bye, Peter.